and then okay I have no idea what I just did but uh, gosh. okay I will have to record it and uh, put it on uh, on YouTube for you uh, I, I usually have this button where I can say allowed to be able to record uh, for some reason it's not responding okay that, that's 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 fine that's fine um just to confirm can you hear me loud and clear i'm going to switch off my video can hear you prof no problem thank you thank you yes Perfect. prof can hear you okay. yes prof all right all right good okay so um the nice part about you not seeing me now is that at least now i can uh, talk while i'm standing uh, so that you can also, uh, yeah, uh, I can show you. So, 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 I wanna, I wanna talk about what is it that I am expecting of you. If you ask me, uh, if you say, Prof, uh, can I finish it by end of June? You can, because uh, this thing is not difficult at all. It's a proposal. Some of you have written proposals. Uh, we've made life easy for you because we've now told you what each and every one of you are, are working on in terms of, um, in terms of the project. So uh, I, what else have we done? I, I have sent you um, uh, audio record, um, or not audio, I've sent you um, uh, 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 USBs with uh, literature, uh, you've had a workshop where you guys uh, were brought down, stayed here very well. You, you now know what you want to do. It would be a bit treasonous if you were to say, uh, Prof, I don't know what is it that I'm supposed to do. And I thought instead of um, uh, letting one or two people suffer, some of you may know, which is good. Uh, I thought, let me call for this meeting so that we all can talk and find a way of uh, uh, um, making sure we are on the same page. This is the activity that I am expecting each of you to be involved in. Remember I gave you some assignment around literature and stuff. You can still integrate it uh, we'll, uh, in, in, in whatever you, 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 you're going to be doing now. Um, I want to just close everything so that I'm clear. So this is what a 40 year proposal looks like in terms of the guidelines. Of course, there are things that are not here that we would still expect you to do. The cover page, the table of contents. And when I say table of contents, I'm not talking about that part where you write uh, here, uh, introduction, okay? On your table of contents, uh, introduction. Uh, and then you put the dots by yourself, like dot, 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 2012 page one. And then you go to, I'm expecting you by now to know that, oh, uh, there is a quicker way of doing it. Um, I, I, all I just need to do is to go to, uh, which one is it? Which one is it? I always mess it up here. Uh, layout, no. References, yes. And then use this table of contents. And before even saying, I don't know how to do it, we all have YouTube. YouTube has made our lives easy because YouTube allows us to be able to see some of these things for what they are and so that we are able to do uh, this work. So what I want to do, and I understand some of you by six o'clock want to be gone, I want to try and cover each and every one of the headings um, that concern this project according to the proposal. And my aim really is to say to you guys, it's not complicated at all. It's so simple. It's just a matter of applying yourself and making sure that you've got all your stuff sorted out. You've got information, try and conceptualize it. And what I'm going to work with, with um, I'm going to work with um, uh, Kanisa's uh, uh, topic, which is, um, I'm going to show you right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say share and say, all of you have had this privilege of having the topics made easy for you, showing you what it is that you're supposed to be doing, okay? We've even provided the hypothesis. 
we've even provided for the PhD students a generic guide to say, for as long as you can come up with any idea in your topic that is around the following outline, we are happy with it. We've even provided you all this information. And usually, it's not always like that, I must say. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to work with uh, this second topic. And I want to show you just some work that you can do just, just within an hour of just trying to organize yourself and then subsequently doing the other work, which is the writing. So in one screen, you won't be able to see this. I will have this um, a guide here. And then I'm going to be alternating between between screens. So I want to start with this this thing. And I, it's a little tactic that I'm now doing. OK, so let's add something which is not there. I'm going to edit here. Uh, insert. Uh, above and then we're going to put the title okay okay so in one hour your aim would be to try and fill in this stuff so that you've got a map of what you want to achieve so title simple in the powerpoint slide that uh, i've given you telling you what the project idea is the project is there okay the title for Kanisa is already there, and I'm, I'm using her as an example. You can also um, do it on your project, and this is the title that's there. You can even say to yourself, ah, no, man, I'm, I'm a bit mature. I'm not um, uh, laid back in terms of uh, just accepting what the supervisor has written. So here it's the drivers. Uh, no, I remembered we don't put symbols in the title. So I could just say drivers and inhibitors of adoption. Oh, Prof forgot a space here. So let me kill that space bit. Drivers and inhibitors of adoption, continued use of high performance computing systems. Now, don't let that word high performance computing systems scare you. If you like, let me say to you, think of any technology that you like to use. And for now, just blind yourself and say, OK, I like using TikTok. I'm looking at the drivers and inhibitors of the adoption and continued use of TikTok, OK, among certain users. High performance computing systems really here is just talking to those resources, those um, systems that have been put in place by the funder in the different institutions where we are that are making our lives a lot easy. For instance, it could be the, the, the network capabilities. And we are going to clarify that, particularly in the, um, in the questionnaire. It could be issues like EDURAM. It could be issues like um, um, certain softwares and supercomputers that are in existence. It, don't, really blind yourself. Don't let that confuse you to say, I've never seen a high performance computing system. By virtue of you being in a university setting and to be able to use the internet and Wi Fi for whatever reason that you use for, you are part of the experience of these high performance computing systems. And I need to make it clear that uh, don't, don't be scared to say, oh, Prof, I've never seen this thing called a high performance computing system. Let's get that uh, uh, clear and let's get people to, to, um, to, to work there. But the other thing you can do, you can say drivers and inhibitors of adoption of computer high performance computer systems. You could even say, okay, prof, I need a bit of context. So what I'll actually add here is a case of historically disadvantaged institutions. Because the study is going to be, you collect data in a context. So you'll say, okay, I need this context to be there. Fine. Don't, please, please allow yourself also the room to learn. If you feel there's something that we <laughs> did not include, that we should have included in the title or in the project that you feel like you want to add, that's part of the experience of learning. It is your project. Own it. Move with it. So all of us have got project uh, uh, titles that are related to the project. Right. We finished that first part. The next part is prof. The next part we want to do is the introduction and the background. Sorry, I have to restart this because I don't want to make an assumption that uh, we are clear. Okay. 
the introduction and the background, okay? Uh, you can see my Word document, right? Yes, bro. Yeah. Uh, yes, bro. Okay. okay. The, intro the introduction and the background. Think of it this way. You now need to set the tone. You now need to set the tone to the study that you're working on. And an introduction is exactly that. An introduction, think of think of somebody who may not understand certain things there. Like, why are you doing this study? Like, why should we be concerned about um, drivers and inhibitors? Why should we be concerned about adoption and continued use? Why should we be concerned about these high performance computing systems? Why should we even be concerned about historically disadvantaged institutions. So what you are doing is playing devil's advocate. You are playing devil's advocate to assume to say, I must set the scene for this research that I'm doing. And I'm going to write it down there. Set the scene. What does setting the scene mean? Think of it this way. You are wanting to help somebody to understand certain things. And, 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 and you just don't impose yourself you must make sure that you try slowly but surely to get the bigger pictures please do not preempt a lot because you will need to specifically do that in the research problem so setting the scene you can tell us about the importance of the knowledge economy we're starting to talk about the knowledge economy, that we are living in an era where knowledge plays an important part. So tell us about the importance of the knowledge economy. Economy. You can tell us about the importance of um, return on investment. So, the importance of the knowledge economy, you can even add something here, government contribution, because government is really the biggest contributor. And in any case, this project is funded through the work of government. So if you look at it this way, we are setting the global scenario for South Africa to be competitive with the rest of its counterparts across the world. South Africa must be seen to be adopting issues related to the knowledge economy. What is the knowledge economy? The knowledge economy is this economy which places importance on the value and currency of knowledge as a, as a basis of promoting competitiveness. If you're feeling adventurous, you can even tell us how well we are ranking in terms of competitiveness. I know in Africa we are doing well, but we might not be necessarily doing well in on the global arena. You can tell us about the importance of then what uh, government does. Government plays an important role. What is that? And all of this needs referencing. You just don't tell us because out of the cuff, you're just telling us uh, as a way of just saying, yeah, Jay. If you find yourself writing issues and positioning issues as matters of facts, Without putting references, you're doing it wrong. And this is not the standard we expect at master's and PhD. Reference your work. Go and do download information on the internet from reputable organization. What do, how, where do we rank in terms of competitiveness? What are the drivers that are influencing how competitive we are? You then talk about the contribution that government plays. What contribution does government plays? Government provides resources. Government provides infrastructure. And please, here's an example. It, it, you just can't tell me that government has provided infrastructure. Unpack it. Tell me what type of infrastructure have they provided. Tell me facts. How many billions of rands have been invested in infrastructure to improve our global competitiveness? You're narrowing it down. The importance, therefore, then is on making sure that for every rand that is being invested, in trying to make sure that we are globally competitive. We must be seen to be having some form of a return on investment. And in understanding the return on investment, we must be seen to be understanding issues related to a 
adoption and use, especially where technology is concerned. Do you see what we are doing? What we are doing in a very simplified way, we are starting from a broad generic description, narrowing it down to a more refined perspective, issues of adoption and continued use. This is important, particularly in the next section, okay, where there has been investments in higher education, there have been investments in industry, okay? By this industry, we mean, if, you, if the irony is that we even have ministries that are dedicated to these portfolios, higher education ministry, we've got um, um, the, uh, a ministry dedicated to industry development. So the context now, the research problem rather, is located within a particular context higher education and industry. We need to be clear here because ultimately you are wanting to graduate with a BCom, an MCom in business management, an MCom in information systems, a PhD in business management, a PhD in information systems. So bring out that context that industry is important, higher education is important. Within that, you can then introduce the work of the CSIR to say one important government supported initiative is through the work of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research. The Council for Scientific and Industrial Research is in a date and with reference support, go to the CSIR website, go and look for documents that you can support your argumentation. It's not up to me to be constantly giving you information. It's up to you to do the work of, a, if you like, a journalist going to go and dig in these websites to try and find information. So one such entity that gets funding from government, remember why government? Well, it's nice you talk about CSIR because you've already spoken about government in the introduction and background. The, the CSIR has been seen to be investing a lot into HPC. What is HPC? High performance computing. Don't assume that your reader knows what high performance computing system is. This is where you can even go to some of the articles I've given you. Provide two definitions of high performance com computing systems. If you like, what is it? How does it work? Um, any, why should we be concerned about it? And its significance. A nice little paragraph with reference support. What is high performance computing system? This can even be, I will allow for it to happen from an international scale first and then you move to a local scale, okay? So what, how is, show me how is high performance computing system working in a South African context? Why are examples? Are there SMMEs that are using HPC? Are there universities that are using HPC? And this is where the hard work comes in. Read, uh, download information around the work of the HP, HPC, uh, of the high performance computing systems, particularly looking at the work of the HP, H, um, uh, CSIR. But uniquely, this must then lead to the problem. Now, you take a pause there, go back to your title. The title for Kanisa reads Drivers and inhibitors. What I would recommend, I think um, uh, there's a topic on um, cyber security. Uh, uh, someone else has perceived uh, issues around technology acceptance. Now, stop there and say, okay, I'm focusing on drivers and inhibitors. Don't go straight into talking about them. Go in that list of articles that I've given you. Go and read one or two more papers about drivers and inhibitors. Go and read on the specific issue, issues or issue that you're researching. If it's cyber security, go and dig more on that part, particular part and then say, okay, I would like to see how other researchers who have studied drivers and inhibitors, how have they measured this issue? What, how have they problematized the challenge of drivers and inhibitors? How have they um, framed it within trying to come up to a specific um, uh, research problem? And in the case of this particular one on drivers and inhibitors with reference support, you then say one of the most important barriers 
one of the most important issues that influences how technology is adopted and continually used concerns um, addressing barriers or inhibitors to the adoption continued use, or it also concerns enhancing those factors that are drivers to the adoption and continued use. Argumentation. You're going to look at cybersecurity to say one of the challenges, and cybersecurity is important because we talk a lot about it. We talk a lot about concerns that, oh my gosh, what is my data being used for? Have you ever thought about it that if you post something somewhere in the underworld, somebody could be wanting to use that information for some unscrupulous means? And those concerns are all embedded in the literature. So what you then do in the problem statement part, you clearly show us that there is necessity to enhance the performance of high performance computing systems in both higher education and industry. But in doing so, there must be a way of identifying not only those factors that encourage the continu adoption continued use, but we must also work with those, those factors that encourage are known as drivers, or those factors that discourage, which is inhibitors. These factors must be identified and their relationship to the adoption and continued use agenda of high performance computing systems must be, must be understood. And you must tell us then why, remember here you tell us about your specific variable that I've put in yellow, and then you tell us why. Well, why do we need that? simple because of the ideals of the knowledge economy we want to be an economy that is good at what we do that promotes technology because of the ideals of return on investment and other factors that you may think please just don't go and replicate this um but i'm just giving you an example and so that is a problem statement and so somebody would ask so um, limits prof. I, I, I don't want to do this, but let me do it cautiously. And I'll just write it here. Introduction and background, one to two pages. Research problem. Ideally, let's make it one page. This is what we call tight writing. In tight in the sense that you need to first do this map. Okay. This map kind of tells you what you want to do and it will stop you from this lazy type of reading where people just go and sit and are just down opening a folder. Oh, okay, next one, next one. Have a map, have a direction, go and change even what I'm writing here, go and change it to suit what you are feeling and what direction you're taking. And then the easiest part, and Prof was like, oh, what do you mean the easiest part? Because this part is easy, and I'm gonna show you why I think it's easy. In fact, I don't even need to bring that up. I need to just, uh, let's, let's make sure that we do this properly because it might change. Um, uh, uh, just to check, I see there's a person called Nomfe. Are you in the right place, Nomfe? I think if you were here for BC213, that class is finished. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to send the recording. That class was for an hour, it's already finished. I'll send you the recording. Okay, thank you. Thank okay, you. sure. Okay, so then the next thing, which is the easiest part, and, and man, why do you say it's easy? It's easy because, have a look, have a look at how easy it is, okay title in this section we need two things the primary objective and the secondary objective so the po sorry po so zero po put your title there the po closely resembles the the po closely resembles your title okay so you could say to explore. You can even say to investigate. I don't mind to investigate, to explore, to explore, to investigate the drivers and inhibitors of adoption. Remember, I'm writing this in the in the in the, that's why I'm putting small letters now. Uh, adoption continued use 
of high performance. Now, this is a term that is recognized. So high performance computing systems should, re computing systems, systems must be a small s, to investigate the drivers and inhibitors of adoption, continued use of high performance computing systems. And then you can say within uh, within, you can even say within historically disadvantaged institutions, because these are recognized terms, put them as they are. And that you have it. You have your primary objective. The next thing that you must have, again, not too difficult, secondary objective, SO. Then you say, ah, oh, prof, uh, secondary objectives, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to write. Simple, I'll show you. Um, Secondary objectives, for you to understand this better, go back to the model. And I want to put up the model and show you the model. Go back to the model. This is Kanisa's model. Kanisa's model, okay, seeks to understand the following issues. Those drivers are there and how they influence attitude towards high performance computing systems, the intention of computing uh, systems, actual usage, our inhibitors, how they influence. So what we do know out of this, we do know that on, on one front, I hope the, yeah, it's still showing. On one front, we've got drivers, on one front, we've got inhibitors, and we know what the drivers and inhibitors are. So I, you, I, I want you to look at the slide. I'm going to show you how it looks like now. Secondary objectives must then account for uh, uh, the factors that are in the model. So the first factor in the model is exploring how drivers influence attitude. So that's a secondary objective, okay? You could then say, uh, sorry to investigate the role of drivers, okay? And even put a bracket there and put the drivers. Optimism, 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 ah, I can't spell. Opti optimism, innovativeness, convenience, and compatibility. I'm going to put up so that you can see what I'm writing. Don't worry. On attitude toward high performance computing systems. So that's the first driver. The second driver to investigate the role of inhibitors. And we put the inhibitors, don't worry, you won't see it now. Dual screen, you're going to see, I'm just looking at it so that I can see what I'm writing. Discomfort, insecurity, perceived cost and perceived risk on attitude toward high performance computing systems. The next objective, remember everything in the model, this is particularly for the master's students, PhD students, we can arrange a talk for you two guys uh, probably next week just alone, but we can then sort it out. So we have sorted out the first part. We now need to understand the second part. We are also trying to understand the influence of attitudes towards high performance computing systems on the intention to use high performance computing systems. Again, you can even use the word to investigate. Please note the second Secondary objectives are always more than the primary objective, objectives. To investigate the role of attitude towards high 
performance. I'm going to show you, please bear with me, just follow on the screen. I'm going to show you what we are doing. High performance computing systems on the intention to use high performance computing systems. That's then the third objective, the third secondary objective. The next secondary objective is now looking at what role does perceived availability of these systems influence the actual intention to use? Again, the model, the model is showing you everything that you need to account for and everything in the model must be accounted for. So we say to investigate the perceived availability of high performance computing systems on the intention to use high performance computing systems. The next secondary objective, and let me put them here. Don't worry, please just follow through. I hope you're following through. You'll see for yourself. The next one, is looking at what role does the intention to use high performance uh, system actually influence the actual use of these systems oh okay so again we write i'm going to show you just now bear with me bear with me we write to investigate the role of the intention to use high performance computing systems on the actual use of on the actual use of high performance computing systems so we've covered this one to that one and the last one is just covering normative pressure on actual use which is the last one and then in fact uh, let's stop share so that you can now start seeing what i've been doing uh, behind the cover so we started here remember the primary objective must show resemblance to your title you can see here the primary objective is closely similar to the title more generic the secondary objectives must cover all the elements that are in the model that you're testing. The only one I haven't written here would then be to investigate the role of normative pressure, okay, on the actual use. Oops. All right, hold on. Let me turn my laptop. Perfect. Okay, on the actual use of, okay, sorry, on the actual use of high performance computing system. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have a primary objective and this section is not long. This section at best must just cover these two things, the objectives, in fact, it's objectives, not objective. Objectives, primary objective, this is the primary objectives, closely resemble the title. Um, the secondary objectives must be similar to the things that you are investigating in the model. So cybersecurity, you are only looking at cybersecurity. So your primary, you only have a primary objective there. Uh, you, you, you've got a primary objective, the role of cybersecurity, but you will then have to also account for the other things like uh, the role of attitudes. So yours will only start here for cybersecurity. Okay. And then you finish this part. And by the way, all of this you're doing before you start. And, and, and this is what I uh, urge students. Don't be quick to go and say, today I want to just write. Uh, think about what you're going to write. Do this map first. Then the next part, significance of the study. Ask yourself a question. So what? So what? So what, 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 what the hell are you doing this for? Why is it so important? 
Why, why should we, um, I, 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 you, you need to, excuse me, I, sometimes I want to use words that I, I think I should not use, but I mean, that's just the nature of reality. If I say to you, uh, and, and, and Karen, I want to come to Mtata, uh, you guys would ask, so why are you coming to Mtata? Okay, tell us why you're coming to Mtata. Are you coming because we have work to do? Ask yourself that so what question. Think of then the bigger picture. Think of then this as your gift and contribution to the topical issues that are happening in the country. So what? Well, think of national competitiveness. If we can improve and understand ways in which we can become better at our usage of these systems in terms of the outputs that we are trying to achieve. Again, don't just talk of the CAF, provide references, talk about national competitiveness. I'm thinking national first in relation to the global arena. Okay, and we're doing very well, I'm, I'm, I must say, better than some other African countries. Talk then about the role of for the CSIR, for what, why? Why should then the CSR want to know that drivers influence the usage of their systems? Why should the CSI want to know that they are inhibitors? Well, one of the things is better adoption and continued use. And tell me why. Why would, and I'm not going to tell you everything, by the way, but you need to go and find the answers. Here's a little clue. Go and read what other papers have done. You'll actually find they, they will have significance there. Better adoption, continued use. Why would then that be better? What is the benefit for HDIs? Okay, and this benefit is not only a benefit in terms of their future, but it's also a benefit in terms of their, uh, their um, past. Because if in the past they had not been invested with these resources, and now we are seeing in a democratic uh, dispensation, uh, HDIs enjoying these privileges. I want to know uh, how then do we make, I mean, this is a happy story's argument, future enabled institutions. We, we want to create better institutions. You can even tell us in the, 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 the background section and the problematic uh, problem statement, um, the challenges faced by HDIs, resource utilization, and you, you just need to just Google. Remember, you are now a master's and PhD student. Do not generalize. Find facts and evidence to provide for your argumentation. So what is the clue I can give you there? The next part, 20 minutes left. The next part is the literature review. Our literature review is split into two sections at 48. The first section is the theoretical literature. In other words, what are the theories that accompany the phenomena that we are studying? This is the easiest part. Prof, you keep on saying this is the easiest part. Why? Because in all those papers that I've given you, you can go and look at studies that are closely similar to what you are doing. And the theories that they have used are the same. What are some of the theories that will be there? You tout, TRA, the theory of reasoned action, TAM, the theory, the technology acceptance model. You even have something now called the extended TAM. And I'm, I'm not going to spoon feed you here. The theories are there. Basically, it's the theories that are um, um, explaining the idea that you're working with, which is this idea of adoption and continued use. So you'll actually find most of us, our theories are going to be the same. But however, the second section of all of this is known as the empirical literature. The empirical literature is a section which explains to us the logic and rationale that accompanies each and every one of the hypotheses that you are working with. Again, let's stop share for a minute. Let's go to the model. Let's let's refer to Kanisa's model. Kanisa's model. Oh, sorry, did I do it right? Let's try again. Uh, okay, there it is. Yes, it's highlighted. Kanisa's model is about drivers. 
So we are going to expect a subheading on drivers. We are going to expect a subheading on uh, inhibitors, where all of these issues that are accompanied um, uh, here are going to be discussed as part of borrowing from what we have known from the literature. So, Prof, what is it that I can do before I even start reading all those many papers and even some that I want to download? Here is a little um, a work to help you there. What you can do in, in that section, you will have a, a, a section called uh, a, a literature review, just like this. Okay, let's let's put it here. I want to put it here so that you see it. You'll have a section called literature review. You'll have a section called literature review. Perfect, okay? This will be a section called literature review. And there you've presented all your literature around the, the, the theories that you're working with, okay? Okay, so if you're using cybersecurity, you will still have Utah and stuff, but make sure that you've got something that covers cybersecurity. Make sure if you've got perceived uh, ease of use and all of these things, again, that's all covered in the um, Utah thing. And then, in fact, I would actually say make these um, headings like this. Okay then what you can do, make this size 14, because it's a bigger heading, and make these size 12. Empirical literature, what you can do to make yourself, your life easy, split your sections into subsections. So you could say drivers and their influence on, uh, uh, what, what did I call it? I called it adoption. continued use, okay? Then the next one, inhibitors and their influence on adoption continued use. And these are subheadings. So you can actually make them like this. And then you go to the other parts of the model we can say, you could even say the role of attitudes on adoption, continued use. So what you will then notice is that, wow, um, the, the, the elements that keep coming up are those elements that are in the model. Um, the next one, remember we've done uh, adopt attitude and their influence. The next one is, um, um, perceived availability of resources and their influence on adoption continued use. The next one that we have uh, is uh, normative pressure. Normative pressure and its influence on adoption continued use. So what have you now done? You have tried to summarize and group your empirical literature into some form of um, understanding around the issues that affect you, okay? Drivers and their influence on adoption use. So what is coming at the bottom here is obviously literature, at least two paragraphs each with recent literature sources, don't use old, old sources here, and it's always a little trick. So this is, this is, this is two paragraphs, assume this is two paragraphs. And then at the end of the second paragraph, so this is the second paragraph, you are discussing, drivers play an important part, but please, you are discussing the drivers that are in the model that you're working with. So optimism, innovativeness, if you're describing basically what you are working with in terms of the model that you've got. And then it should dovetail into something. It should then dovetail into the hypothesis. And then you put a, a, a next line and then you say based, uh, and you say based upon all this, 
it can be expected that, and then you put a blah, 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 and you put hypothesis one, okay? What is your hypothesis? We are predicting that drivers, and we, we name them, um, which we copy the same hypothesis that's there, drivers have a positive influence on attitude toward high performance computing system and that's that then you go to the next one again two paragraphs of literature Next one, you're explaining, discussing what the different studies have found, adoption of computer, uh, uh, continued use of high performance computer systems or any computer systems whatsoever. And then what do you do? Put your line there. You're now building it up to hypothesis two. You put it there. And then you write that. Based upon all this, H2, it can be expected that inhibitors, you copy the hypothesis as it is, inhibitors have, a, remember inhibitors are negative, they are negative things, so inhibitors have a negative influence on high performance computer system. You go to the next one, the role of attitudes, define what is meant by an attitude you put your two lines there, perceived availability of resources, and it's simple. The logic is simple. If people have access to resources, it's going to affect how they use uh, technology. If I have a, uh, uh, if you've got, they call it a Tilili, you know, those phones, the old, old ones, which has got no capability for the internet, I cannot go on Facebook on a Tilili. So the availability of uh, the, the high performance computing system or the availability of the technology to support whatever function that I want to do determines that. And then you've done with that. And then this is then the next part. The next part, let's start with the easiest bits. We need to explain this APA, simple. APA, prof, help me understand APA in one minute. Simple, uh, let's use Sandisiwe. Sandisiwe has written a paper, Zembe, comma, S, full stop, open the bracket, the year 2021, and, and, and I need to write this, journal, this is what we do when it's a journal, we close the bracket, then we put the title of the paper, uh, the title of the paper is System Challenges, Solving Them, is the title of the paper. Full stop, close the bracket. The journal which this paper was published in, in is the South African Journal of, no, 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 let's start. The first thing that we need is the volume number. We know it's volume 12, issue number two. Okay, and it's taken from the journal called the South African Journal of Information Management. Straight up the journal, we put a comma, and then we must put the page number, 1 to 12. Okay, and then we must put what's called the DOI. Oh, DOI, but before we do that, the title of the journal must be in italic. Okay, Prof, please show us what's meant by a DOI. I'm going to use a practical example now taken from a journal. Um, I'm going to put it there. I'm going to go to the uh, SAJIM journal, which is the same journal that we're talking about. I've opened the journal. I'm going to stop share, and I'm going to show you from the journal this is the journal that we're working with. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's pick a paper. Let's pick a paper. This one by 
again, or day they wrote this paper at the case of Zululand. Oh, Zululand. Wait a minute. Zululand is also an HDI. Okay, so let's read the abstract. Perception and mobile efficacy towards AI technology help to tell all the students. Oh, so this study shows the importance of using technology within the HDI context. I surely can add this information in the significance of the study that this research is significant in the sense that it is promoting further and continued studies related to technology usage within HDIs. And that's a clever student, because what you're doing is you're not just searching for what the professor wants you to look for. You are also reading and open your eyes and alert to what's also happening. So this is the article by Odede. I then opened the article by Odede. I said, OK, this is the article of what they did. It's page one to eight, one of eight, so that will be pages number one to eight. I need to know that information because some journals don't provide that. So what do I do? I just copy all the information about Odede. Samuel, do you know how this Odede character? You don't tell it? Sorry, Prof, uh, you're breaking up. I can't hear you on this oh, uh, my network. Okay, uh, I don't know. Can the others hear me? It uh, sounds like you just get a little bit too far, but it's fine. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, we need to solve that. Maybe let me pull the microphone closer to me. And how's that now? Uh, perfect, Prof. Perfect. perfect. Yeah, okay. that's perfect. Samuel, do you know this Odede character? Uh, some of must be muted. Okay, let's no, move on. No, sir. You don't. No, okay. I don't know. Okay. That, no. no problem. No problem. So we go back here. But I want to show you how you reference this Odede character. And I'm sorry if I say character, but person. Okay. Anyway, this is the article by Odede. Remember, the referencing technique they've used here is not APA. Another little mistake. APA follows alphabetical order. So Zembe, unfortunately, said this is because of your name, your surname. Uh, you are last at the reference list because of the Z. So make sure your reference list adheres to the re uh, referencing order around alphabetical. So it's Odede. Remove this one here. Don't just copy it because you found it from the journal. Put the bracket here because the journal is using a different referencing style. Close there. Put it there. Put it there. And then say this is the name of the article. Full stop after the name of the article. South African Journal of Information Management must be italic because when we use APA, the name of the journal is always on italic. Left with five minutes. 23, one. 23 is what we call the volume number. One is what we call the issue number. This journal, we know it's page one to eight. So remove that and then you can write one to eight. Put a full stop. Okay, the next thing, Prof, you're saying we should add a DOI. The DOI is really a web address, and usually you will find it. It's written DOI. You see it's written DOI. So you could even put it below that, and then right after that, press Enter. Oh, okay, it's supposed to be just change it to hyperlink. And that's how you reference a title, uh, 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 a journal. Please, 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 you should know the distinction between referencing a journal referencing a page, now uh, um, uh, a book. Please, 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 you should know in text, when do we use et al? We only use et al once we've declared all the names in the first reference. Zembe, Skichi, uh, Mbali, uh, 2021, argue for the importance of blah, 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 blah. And then the next thing, then you then say, okay, uh, I'm using the same reference again, Zembe et al. So you've declared them and then you're allowed to do that. APA referencing style is important. Simple thing here, conclusion of the, the, the proposal, tell us um, what has been covered. Okay. It's, it's a repetition part, what has been covered. And it's usually just a, a little uh, quarter of a page. Outline of the chapters. Tell us what chapter one is going to be, which is the proposal, which is chapter one. Tell us what chapter two is going to be. Tell us what chapter three is going to be. And I think most of you have done research, you would be able to do that. Ethical consideration, an important section. Tell us what principles of ethics 
are you going to adhere to? By this we mean, are you going to do adhere to informed consent? You, well, all of you will. Are you going to adhere to anonymity? Okay, tell us at least how many, let's say four ethical principles that you're going to adhere to. And I'm, I'm gonna make it life easy. I'm gonna give you three already. And what's the other one? Well, the other one is that you're going to apply to the University of Forte Research Ethics Committee, otherwise known as UREC for clearance. This you must mention. Okay, and tell us one more. Provide reference support. Delimitations of the study. What does this mean? Factors deemed important but not being measured. So in Kanisa's model, a factor that is important would be the organizational culture. But you're not measuring organizational culture. And it's important to say this because research is bounded. We can't measure everything. So think of other factors that may influence the adoption, continued use. Go and read those papers. And just half a paragraph of acknowledging that these factors would be important, such as the organizational culture, uh, uh, the support of management, but you're not measuring them. And then the final part in two minutes the research design and methodology for the master's students, PhD guys, I'm gonna give you time to think about it. We can have a session next week. For the master's student, I'm just gonna answer it simply, okay? And I'm not going to tell you, you are going to search for the information. Point A, what paradigm are we using, Prof? We are using positivism. Go and read what is positivism, define what is positivism, and why is it important? What method are we using, Prof? We are using the quantitative method. Go and define what is the quantitative method and why is it important? Validity and instrument, I will leave it to me, leave it to Prof, because I'm going to be sorting out your scales, okay? Leave this to Prof. It includes also the instrument. I will send you this information once I sort out the, the scales here. Data collection method, how are we going to collect this, method, this data? An online survey will be created and distributed to staff and students in HDIs. By the way, one thing I forgot, in your theorizing, also make it a point to also uh, heighten the importance of staff because staff are also part of the study. The online survey will be created. I will also try and find out, maybe you can also do as students, what are the total number of students in, this is the issue of sampling. Go and find out about sampling. What are the total number of students and staff in HDIs. So basically what we are running, if you like, could be a census. No, not a census. Um, is a, is a, is a, um, uh, I don't want to call it a random uh, sampling, but we, we could call it a convenient sample of employees and staff in HDIs. And then finally, uh, sorry, so that people are not confused. And I'm not going to tell you here, data analysis, we are going to use tests like correlation, Tell us what is correlation. We're going to use regression. And we're also going to use something called structural equation modeling. What is it? You need to go and find out. Ladies and gentlemen, I have kept to my time in one minute. I'm over the limit. In this short time, I have managed to map out what my proposal is going to look like. So what I then can do is then say, okay, it's easy. Now I can sit down and start planning ahead what I want to do and how I'm going to do it. Any questions or comments? I know, um, Karen, you have to go. So let's quickly put questions or comments. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a YouTube video, send it to you. I'm also going to send you this um, Word document uh, so that you have access to this uh, uh, information. This is not hard, by the way. But if you leave it to two days before your deadline, which, which we now need to talk about later on when I liaise with your supervisors, I would love to see everybody submitting by end of June, the first draft.
Any questions or comments? I think Floyd uh, has left us because maybe it could be electricity or issues. So I said Lord Shady is switching to his phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That's fine. That's fine. I've seen that. Any questions or comments? No, well, thank you, Prophet. It was very clear. Thank you. Very helpful. It's easy. And here is the nice part. If you can finish this part, please, please, if you can finish this part, go and defend it to the department. Go and defend it to the faculty. I have no problem signing claims to say, Prof, I need to buy A, B, C, and G. Can I? We've got no problems with that. But we must also, we need you to get through this yardstick. Finish this so that end of the year, we start collecting data. And your two biggest issues are keep your supervisor happy, defend it in your department, defend it at the faculty level, apply for ethical clearance, start data collection while we're working on chapter two. And we, you, you're my friend. You're my, I, I will, yeah, we'll work together very well. I want you guys not only to benefit from this and you, you look pretty in newspapers to say, wow, these are the, the chosen few, but you must, you must show me show me that you are hungry for this and show me that you understand you cannot be saying to me i don't understand what this project is about because everything is clearly laid out for you do not think too hard about that word high performance computing system if you like blind that word TikTok. put TikTok and say adoption and continued use of TikTok. okay but obviously, just think about it, own the project, make us proud to be part of this project. Okay, uh, I'm going to send you the uh, documents. Floyd and Samuel, I would like to have a little meeting with you next week. I'll, I'll let you know. Um, and you, what you can do so long is send me the ideas that you've been thinking of so that at least we are um, uh, together. But, but the other principles that you saw there about the section of the proposal, they apply to you. Please, it is murderous and not right for you to send stuff which you have just cut and paste from the internet where you are not referencing properly and you just say this, show us that you, we are investing a lot on you and show us that you can also read outside the literature that uh, 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 you've provided. Go and look at, even you see this article of Odede that we just saw. That article can be used to actually argue that we need more research in HDIs because people like Odede have shown us that there is potential. And, and, and I'm happy when I see that because you're taking initiative to try and make it work. Okay, have a good evening. A lot of you are going to be cut off because of load shedding, but thank you, thank you, thank you. If you are stuck, let me know, and then I'm going to write an email to those, just an indication, so that I, I, I don't go by overdo it. Who needs um, their thing reset? Uh, Floyd, you need it reset, right? Their email, their 40 their email. I need my reset, sir. Samuel? Yes, sir. I think Kanisa as well. Sandy and um, and Karen, are you guys fine? Um, I am fine. I'm Sandy fine. Is fine. Karen, are you fine with your email, your forty email? Yes, thank you. Mine works. Okay, Tinashe. It's, it's working. It's working. So I just need to sort yeah. out Floyd, uh, Samuel, and Kanisa. Okay, that will be sorted Floyd tomorrow. Floyd's is working, sir. Sorry? He said mine is reset. He said his own is now reset in the chat section. Who, whose is that? Uh, Floyd, sir. Floyd is fine. Okay, Floyd. So it's only Samuel and um, and Kanisa. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, uh, write an email to the lady and yeah. Okay, guys, happy writing. Enjoy this project. It's exciting. Karen, you want to say something? Oh, it's just a no clap. Prof. Uh, no, no, it's a clap. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a clap. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> I think you're raising your hand. Okay. Enjoy the project. And remember, your duty is just to do this hard work of the project. The other little things, who knows? Maybe uh, next writing retreat, we're going to be in Durban or somewhere. 
but let's enjoy the privilege of what we have of doing this landmark project. The whole country now knows about this project and let's make each other proud to be part of this research team. Thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you, bro. Yes, good night. Thank you.